Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we have a new release of Ubuntu 19.10. So we'll be going through how to install it and do a quick walkthrough. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk. We'll boot that disk and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. Right now I'm on Ubuntu's website, ubuntu.com. I'll put a link in the description below. What we'll do is go to their download section by hitting download up here. And as you can see right here in the middle, it's announcing that Ubuntu 19.10 has been released. Uh, let's go ahead, hit the download, and then you have your option between the desktop or the server. The server is going to be a minimal install with only a command line interface at the end, a terminal that you can use in order to install other packages that you might need for the server. And the desktop is going to be like a everyday workstation for everyday users. And as it says here, you can even download it and run it against another system like Windows or Mac. So the version that we want is the 1910 version. Let's go ahead and click on that. Or you can go ahead and click on the Ubuntu desktop up here if you'd like to select an alternative download. So 1910 here, it will redirect us and it will actually start beginning the download right away. As you can see up here, we have the AMD 64 version, meaning a 64-bit version of the Ubuntu 1910 image. And that's the one that we want to use. There is other images you can download. So if you need something else, make sure to go to the alternative download section. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a empty USB or CD. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application and can create a bootable disk the application is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk. So the first thing we'll do is select an image, and that image will be the one that we just finished downloading. As you can see here, it's Ubuntu 1910, the desktop version, and 64-bit. Select that, open it up. And then for a target, I'm going to go ahead and insert my USB into my computer. And if you have multiple USBs or CDs that you want to choose from, you can always hit the change button and select the proper USB or CD that you want to flash. So finally, all you have to do is hit the flash button and it'll begin flashing the disk. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to a computer or server where you want to install Ubuntu 19.10 on it. After you've installed the disk, you'll take it over to a computer or server where you want to install Ubuntu 19.10 on, and then you'll insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer, usually one of the F keys like F2 or F10. Then finding a tab usually called boot order and then exchanging the order so that the bootable disk is first. After you have that set up, you will save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a screen similar to this if you did everything correctly. And if everything booted up properly, you'll be seeing a screen like this for your installer. You will first might get a splash screen that says Ubuntu and it's loading in. And after that, this will proceed. And if you've uh, made it this far, go ahead, take a moment to like the video. It really does help me out. And if you're stopping by and you're new today, make sure to subscribe for new videos in the future. What we'll do here is go ahead and directly install Ubuntu first. On the left side, you can select what language you would like to install Ubuntu with. Go ahead and hit the install Ubuntu button instead of try Ubuntu. That will just boot you into a live disk if you select the other option. Next thing is the keyboard layout that you want to use. English United States is fine for me. You can also test your keyboard in this text field down here. You can see that mine works just fine. QWERTY is what I typed in and that's what came out. I can go ahead and hit continue after this. And up here we'll get to decide what updates and software if we want any other updates or software installed with the current installation. So you have two options here. You can go ahead and do the normal installation, which includes a web browser, different types of uh, tools and utilities, LibreOffice, uh, 
a few games as well as some media players. And then you can choose the minimal installation if you just want a web browser and the few basic utilities that come with Ubuntu standard. Then your other options include downloading updates while installing this version of Ubuntu. This will save you time if you do it. Then the final option here is to install third party software for graphics and Wi-Fi. This is if you have a graphics card or a Wi-Fi card that doesn't work out of the box with Ubuntu and past releases. This is a newer option that you can go ahead and select and if you need to go ahead and select that. I'll do the normal installation and I'll download the updates while installing Ubuntu. There shouldn't be too many updates considering this is a brand new release here. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Now you will get a few more options on the installation type that you would like to make. I will go ahead and erase my entire disk and install Ubuntu fresh. It gives you a warning here that it will delete anything and everything on that disk that you select to install Ubuntu on. So make sure that there is nothing on the storage that you are installing Ubuntu on. A couple other options is to either encrypt the Ubuntu installation, which you will choose a password in order to encrypt the hard drive or SSD that you're installing this on. And then you will be asked for that every time you log in, as well as the LVM option, which will allow you to maintain your storage pay, maintain your storage space if you want to resize your partitions later. This is very good for virtual machines. A new option, the experimental erase disk and use ZFS. It's a different type of formatting. You can read up on ZFS and decide whether or not you want to give that a try. And then of course you have the custom ability in doing something else. I will just go ahead and select the very first option to erase my disk and install Ubuntu. You might actually have a, di a few different op options as well, such as uh, installing Ubuntu alongside another operating system, but I don't because I have a clean hard drive here. So I'm going to hit install now. And at this point, it's going to ask me to confirm that I want to write all the changes to the disks that I've selected. So I am confident that I do, so I'll hit continue. Next, we're asked what time zone we're in. Today we'll be in New York, and you can select your time zone and hit continue. Following this, it's going to ask you to set up a user and a host name for the computer. So I will use uh, Savvy Nick. Savvy Nick is my computer name. My username will be Savvy Nick as well, and I will put a password in and confirm that password. Following that, I will select the login automatically. This will I will select the login automatically option. I do like being logged in right away without having to put my password in, but you may not, so choose whichever one that you're more comfortable with. If you choose the login automatically option, if someone reboots the computer, they will be able to log in to your Ubuntu desktop, so choose wisely. And after that, we begin the install. And just a few words about Ubuntu, it's uh, one of the most used and user-friendly Linux distributions out there. And their focus is on offering a great free solution to Linux with a great community for support. It deploys the GNOME desktop environment with its standard desktop installation. And it is available in different projects from a desktop project to server, internet of things, and even embedded support. This is a great place to start if you're new to the Linux experience and you are looking for something with great support and stability. A lot of other distributions build off of the Ubuntu distribution and add their own little tweaks, which I'm sure we'll be seeing a bunch of updates coming from other distributions here in the next few weeks since Ubuntu just its latest update or release. Now we'll give this a moment to go ahead and finish installing. And once the installer is complete, you will get this notification here where it says that the installation is complete and it's ready to restart. Go ahead and hit the Restart Now button. And while rebooting, you'll want to make sure to go ahead and remove any installation media that you may have so you don't boot back into the live image or 
the installer. But if you do, it's not a big deal. You'll just have to reboot once again and remove the media so you can boot into your newly installed system. Here we get a message that we can remove the installation media. So go ahead and remove it and then press enter. And once the system's finished rebooting, you'll be welcomed by a little welcome screen here that allows you to connect your online accounts. And I'd like to congratulate you at this point because you've installed Ubuntu 19.10 successfully. What we'll do is we'll look around just a little bit and skip through here. You can uh, choose to send information down to Canonical, which is the company that runs Ubuntu and maintains it so I'm not going to send any system information down. You can set up some privacy information here such as your location services. I'm going to turn that off and it says I'm ready to go. Now one thing you see here are commonly used applications that are available for Ubuntu such as Spotify, Discord, Skype and others and you can open the software manager now and download any of these that you may like to use after that just go ahead hit done and let's run through this real quick up here in the left corner you see that you have the file manager that you can click on it actually is taking you to the home page here of the user that you're currently using so savvy nick's home page here what you see is the desktop documents and other various directories that come standard with most linux distributions We'll exit out of that file manager. You also have a trash bin here if you want to put in stuff in there. Some common things that come with Ubuntu on the left side, we see a dock. And I've noticed that it does look a little bit different from the other versions of Ubuntu that I've used in the past. I know that they just got a GNOME update, so the desktop environment did get updated slightly. Uh, the standard packages are still here, so you have your Firefox, it's your default web browser, and Thunderbird as your mail client. You have a couple other things here like Rhythmbox and LibreOffice is the office suite that you get with this installation, Ubuntu software. So like I was talking about before, if you need to go ahead and download any applications that you might want besides the standard ones, this is a great place to do it if you need some help. And they even include Amazon there for you. If you click this little dotted array down in the left, you can now install additional drivers as well as access the ones that you've pre-installed. And you can also scroll through to different types of applications. They got a to-do list for you, some statistics on the power usage, and you can even create a startup disk. So, so this is great. We'll go out, exit out of here. And finally, let's just go ahead and look at the top right, see if anything's changed. We have our shutdown, our lock, and our settings here, as well as the user currently using the computer and the current battery life, as if you're using a laptop or wired connection, and our settings, if you need to change any settings on the wired connection, the volume, and then the background, of course, has been updated a little bit here. And let's see what else they have if we hit the change background. You can see that they have a few other offerings here. A lot of uh, otters, as you can tell, because that's the animal for this one. They're all based off of animals. I'm just going to select a nature background just to kind of look at it here see what that looks like that looks really good it's very uncluttered it looks really good the icons are very nicely laid out everything's easy on the eyes I really do enjoy using Ubuntu uh, it's great for again beginner users and I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Ubuntu 1910 and if you have any questions comments or suggestions please post them below in the comments section also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.